Oh, hi there. Say, do you want to see someone who really enjoys nostalgic stuff review some commercials? Some old ones and new ones? But unfortunately, you've come to the wrong place. Channel Awesome's that way. But since you're here, let's review some commercials anyway! Just what is it about commercials that makes them so fun to watch? Maybe it's because of the nostalgia feel to them. I mean, it's like saying, Hey, do you remember that Action Force set when you were little? Or do you remember those Pop-Tarts you loved eating when you were little? These commercials reminded you on how great these products were, why you always bought them, why they were so great. While some commercials do manage to do their purpose of advertising a certain product, some are just... weird. Like they make you question, why the hell did this make it onto TV? So, I'm going to take a look at some nostalgic and weird commercials, some old ones and some new ones, from the UK and from the US. Because hey, I feel that British people need to know about American advertising, and Americans should know about British advertising. Am I right? So, this is my first review commercial special, which I like to call, There's More After This. There's more after this, Doc. The Adventures of Captain Gordon. So, let's start off with some US commercials from the 90s. Now, keep in mind, when I first saw this commercial on YouTube, it was right after a promo for Growing Pains on Channel 11. And then, immediately afterwards, came this Captain Gordon commercial. Which, at first I thought, was a forgotten Saturday morning cartoon. Which, to me, looks like a mutation of Aquaman and Captain Planet. Look, Captain Gorton! Bubble, with the crunch power of Gorton's fish sticks, the Gorton's fisherman changes into Captain Gorton! Oh, he has to be one of those superheroes, hasn't he? He has to be one of those superheroes that gets his powers just by eating a specific food. I mean, it's not like Captain Gordon already has his powers, or he just needs to change into a suit and a cape. No, he just gets his powers just by eating fish fingers. Yeah, wouldn't it be great if Superman had this sort of idea? Oh no, it's Godzilla! Don't worry, I have just the thing! There is so much wrong with this. Now for a real catch. Gordon's fish sticks with crunch power. Hey kids, you too can fight pollution with Captain Gordon's stickers inside specially marked packages of Gordon's fish <laughs> Yeah, I mean, who needs Captain Planets, the Planeteers, and what we're already doing to prevent pollution? Instead, we could have just used fucking stickers! What are they gonna tell us next? We can use coloring books to stop Ebola? Okay, I apologize. Captain Gordon stickers inside specially marked packages of Gordon's fish sticks with me on the box. It's Megazord. Yeah, now we're talking Power Rangers. Even though my nostalgia for Power Rangers started with the Disney era, like SPD, Dino Thunder, and Jungle Fury, I will admit, I like seeing the original Mighty Morphin commercials from the 90s. I thought you were driving! Me? I thought you were! Ah! Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, too hot to handle. Whoa! I didn't know a Megazord toy is that powerful! I mean, it is cool to see that the Megazord toy has the same power as the actual Megazord, only much smaller, but... Sheesh, look at the damage it's done to this kid's bedroom. Shouldn't there be a warning label on the packaging? Warning, this Megazord toy can create massive destruction to a kid's bedroom. Perfect for demolition. 
I mean, what do you expect the kids' parents to say when they see this? Hey, I thought you were driving. Me? I thought you were. <laughs> Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, too hot to handle. Hey, Jimmy, can you keep that down? I'm trying to read my paper. Oh, but Jimmy, again? This is the fourth time this week. This is going off your allowance, young man. Yeah, hello, Wix. Yeah, my son's been playing with his Power Rangers again. But it's not just the original Mighty Morphin commercials that are weird. Some of the more recent Power Ranger commercials are weird too. Like this one. This is promoting the Super Mega Force Ranger keys. The Power Rangers unlock the power. It's good versus evil, and these Rangers are the keys to victory. Rangers, the key to unlocking your true power is in the Legendary Morpher. Uh, why do the visuals tell me that the Super Mega Morpher is like this big command ship for all the Ranger keys? Like it's the shield header carrier for the Power Rangers? It's Morphin time! That never gets old. Hey, unless you can do a really good Jason David Frank impression, then I'll believe you. Rangers. It's going to take firepower to defeat this enemy. What enemy? I don't see an enemy. All I see is these colorful keys. Yeah, come on, Mystic Force. Work your magic. I've got this. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is that? Oh god. Why am I having this vision that all the Power Rangers have this giant metal slot of metal hidden in their asses and it comes out with the... Oh, I don't want to talk about it! Nice wheels! Uh, parallel universes. They're Japan to us. Wait. The key to victory is yours! Let the battle begin! <laughs> This is what we envisioned the legendary battle to be like, people. But instead we get stock footage, not very good fight scenes, and... Hello, old friend! Glad to be back! No nuts to continuity! Yeah, these commercials might not make much sense, but it still has that charm to it. Just like the original Mighty Morphin seasons. Say, who's watching where we're going? Huh? Not me, I'm not. Uh-oh! Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, too hot to handle. Ego Mini's ass, how big is your mouth? Okay, this is a commercial for Ego Minis, the miniature version of Ego Waffles. Ego Minis and Waffles, the size of your mouth. Yes, Ego Mini is part of this complete record. Hey. Um... What is the point of this product? I mean, why make a smaller version of something that you would normally have for breakfast? I mean, it could be a pack lunch thing, like yogurts or cheese strings, but why have it for breakfast? Wouldn't your fuel tank be a little empty afterwards? Jimmy, breakfast is ready! I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy! Ah, <laughs> uh, Dad? Why is my full English breakfast so tiny? Huh? Oh, sorry, that's not your breakfast. That's for your pack lunch. Here is your breakfast. Oh boy, a cookie crisp ripoff! My favorite! Hmm. Yes, Eggo Mini is part of this complete breakfast. Hey, let go of my Eggo Mini! Terminator, now programmed to protect. He's the ultimate weapon against evil. I'm Power Arm Terminator. But evil T-1000 can take any form. Sure, why not? If they can make toys out of the Alien franchise, then I guess Terminator 2 would do just fine. But let's really think about this for a minute. They're making toys for 8 to 12 year old boys based on movies that are... <clears throat> oh, take this! You are finished! Not a chance! Now I'm a different turn- Wow! 
I didn't know water can burn flesh or plastic into an endoskeleton. Hmm. Huh. I should be more careful next time I wash my hands. What am I? Oh. Ow. Now I'm a different Terminator. I'm Techno Punch. Hasta la vista, baby. Mm. I mean, it's fine when Schwarzenegger says it, but not when a little kid says it. It's just weird. Terminator. I'll be back. Oh, ho, ho. I'm sure he'll be back all right. I'll be back. Wacky what? Oh no. Okay people, this is the reason why we don't use Photoshop for animation. <laughs> They're literally screaming in terror because they just ran out of Kool-Aid. Oh no! We're out of Kool-Aid! This is truly the worst thing that's ever happened to us! Whoa! And once again, the Kool-Aid man is destroying public property just to sell a juice drink. But hey, as long as there's no thirsties in this advert, it's fine. Oh yeah! Hey, look at that, children! All the seas in the world have now been turned into Kool-Aid! <sighs> I wish it was my bean instead. That was one of my childhood dreams. Wacky Wild Kool-Aid Oh yeah! With all the O's and delicious SpaghettiOs pasta... Hey kids, guess what? Chef Boy RD isn't the only company that makes cringy pasta! Your mouth leads the mambo! What? What the hell is up with this kid's mouth? He looks like one of those weird singing aliens from Star Wars. You know, those CGI ones that were in the special editions? All those tasty O's means a mouthful of fun. Oh, 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 SpaghettiOs! Yeah, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs is right. I mean, when you were a kid going down to have some dinner, you'd be expecting your parents to cook you something delicious, like pizza or hamburgers, but instead they gave you SpaghettiOs, and then you're like, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs, yeah. Obviously, they forgot to put in the yeah part in the slogan. Uh -oh, SpaghettiOs! SpaghettiOs celebrates Toy Story Activity Center CD-ROM with magic scenes that appear when you go outside. Magic scenes that appear when you go outside? Why show it outside? Does it not show you anything until it's directly under the sunlight? I mean, why can't you show it inside? Is there any difference? What does it mean? You can collect all six under specially marked labels. The TARDIS is under attack by the Doctor's enemies! Believe it or not, the thing that got me interested into watching Doctor Who was watching the toy commercials. But even then, the toy commercials are really, really questionable. Join Captain Jack Harkness and Rose Tyler as they come fa- <laughs> Just look at the pose this little girl did for the Rose figure. It looks like she's getting ready to kick some alien ass. She isn't afraid from whatever comes in her way. She's getting ready to kick some of those metal spiders. But... in the show... Run! Join Captain Jack Harkness and Rose Tyler as they come face to face with the evil Slavine and Space Pig. Uh, 
I wouldn't really call the space pig evil. I mean, don't you remember? He was running away scared through the hospital. He was scared that the humans might harm him. Well, it's okay to call the Sladeens evil because of the... <laughs> but, not the space pig. He was scared. It was scared! It was scared. Run from the living plastic autons and learn the truth from the face of Bo. And what is the secret of the face of Bo? Uh, this is a series one toy advert, isn't it? And from what I can remember, they don't establish or say much about the face of Bo in series one. They don't do that until season two. Um, kind of a bit of false advertising there, I think. The TARDIS is under attack by the Doctor's enemies, Slavine, Cassandra, and Sycorax. But don't worry, the Doctor can fight them off with his sonic screwdriver. I don't think the sonic screwdriver would do anything to them. Here's my effective way on defeating these enemies. Slavine, A giant jug of vinegar. Cassandra! A giant hot spotlight. And Sycorax! Just bring in the Samurai Power Rangers. Lilith makes her attack in Shakespeare's theatre! Brannigan and Novice Haim are here to help! Help with what? With whatever problem they're facing against? Stop Lilith from attacking Shakespeare's theatre? Yeah, they don't really explain much of the episodes that these characters are in. Here's another problem I have. Throughout some of these commercials, the Doctor doesn't seem to be fighting off these enemies or trying to stop these invasions from happening. He just escapes in the TARDIS. Oh no! The Daleks have joined the battle! Time to get out of here! Run for your life, Rose! The forces of evil are massing against the Doctor. It's time to escape in the TARDIS. What the hell? What, is the Doctor a wimp? Is he afraid that he'll regenerate from getting a single cut? Does he want the whole of space and time to just disappear out of existence? <laughs> Alright then, let's see what we have here. Oh my god! There's a giant Cyberman and Dalek invasion of Earth! Exterminate all life forms below! Exterminate! <laughs> Now screw this, I'm not going to deal with this problem, even though I'm the only one who knows about Cybermen and Daleks in this city. I'm just going to let the human race deal with it themselves. I'm out of here. Even though these adverts don't make much sense, it was what got me interested into Doctor Who in the first place. So at least some good came out of these adverts. Doctor Who, Series 3 action figures and flight control TARDIS. Strong character. Okay guys, bring that baby back. Put the beers in ice, Houston. We're on our way. Oh yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Specsavers adverts were always amazing and funny as hell. They usually set up one thing, but it turns out that it was supposed to be some other thing. Like for example, this little kid has this remote control, which he thinks powers this toy car. But instead, it's the remote control for the garage doors. Dad, the car's broken! <laughs> and that line really sets the bombshell for hilarity. Well, I've seen weirder things that have happened at a train station. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. No. 
Oh god, he's gonna turn you into kebabs now! Trust me, none of us want to piss off Gordon Ramsay. Hey, have you seen my crisps? Are you sure? Are you really sure? Introducing the Great British Dinners Range. Help yourself. Mm. Of course you can't. Mm. They're just crisps. It's not that big of a deal. Accidentally been sent into someone else's wet dream? Wait, they're at a public beach? But there's hundreds of. and it looked like a. What's going on here? So, why did they object him? Was it the geeky glasses? Was it the deodorant? Seriously, what's going on? Got a cheese one. It's nice to take the weight off your feet. What about cheese sandwich? Cheese sandwich will live. They even started making Specsavers commercials using nostalgic children's characters, like Thunderbirds and the Mr. Men. Although, some of the choices don't make a bit of sense. FAB. Wait, the hood doesn't wear glasses. Or was he referring to sunglasses? The happiest man in Happy Land is Mr. Hat. Oh, oh dear. What could possibly be wrong? Is it your new glasses? Now oh, come on. We all know perfectly well that Mr. Happy doesn't wear glasses. Oh, oh dear. That's not good, Jess. They're my only pair. Well, at least with the Postman Pat one, they got that one right, because Postman Pat actually does wear glasses. Oh. Oh. Dear me. This is just too rich. Postman Pat causing destruction all over Greendale because he doesn't have glasses. <laughs> Should've gone to Specsavers, Pat! So if you've got the chance, go and watch these Specsavers adverts. They are just so hilarious. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> what sort of cheese was that? She's done yoga and Yorkshire puddings. Oh, God. These Aunt Bessie's commercials really grind my gears. Why? Because they make no sense. Okay, let me tell you the basic premise of them. <clears throat> These two elderly women stalk or spy on an innocent family every single night while they're having their roast dinner. Does that sound perverted or what? And according to these adverts, it looks like that's all they do all day. Roast parsnips, stuffing balls, on a Wednesday. Margaret, there's a man in the kitchen. What was that? Margaret, there's a man in the kitchen. He must be in his 30s, and what are you at? Your 80s? So, isn't that kind of like a strange... Uh. May 
table. I'm sorry. I'm so hungry. I swear, they spy on them the moment they wake up, and they spy on them all day until they go to bed. It's like they don't eat. They just like to spy on these innocent family all day, and they don't even know this. If there were a definition of the word creepy, there'd be a picture of these two elderly women. As well as... It looks like they don't even eat while spying on them. Or are they hungry for what they're cooking? One, ask them over to dinner with them. Or two, go to the supermarket and buy those Aunt Bessie's products that they're having! Why don't food commercials ever do that? Why don't they just go to the freaking shops? <laughs> this is really entertaining for me, seeing my next door neighbors eating their dinner every single night. <laughs> sure, I might not have changed my clothes, I might not have showered for a month, and I might not have eaten anything for a week, but it's completely worth it. Oh, yes. Uh, excuse me. Hello? Uh, hi. We're your next door neighbors from across the street. We can clearly see you spying on us right now. Yes? Is that a problem? Um, yes it is. My kids are scared of you right now. I'm afraid that you're going to murder them in their sleep. What are you having for dinner tonight? Um, what does that have to do with anything? ANSWER THE QUESTION! Um, we're having roast chicken, roast parsnips, and Yorkshire puddings. Ooh, Yorkshire puddings! I really need to spy on you tonight for this! Okay, I'll see you later, bye! Wait, wait, you didn't answer my question! Ooh, wait, what's happening down there? Oh, screw that! This is way more exciting and way less creepy than seeing that crap! <laughs> Meat and three veg, Margaret! There's no traditions anymore, Mabel. It's broken Britain. Wait, why does that voice sound familiar? There's no traditions anymore, Mabel. It's broken Britain. Wow! Whoa. That was amazing! Oh, Mum, are you all right? Oh, oh, that gave my mum a real fright, you know. No, I don't think it's a house, Bobs. What is it, then? Some kind of animal? Oh, right. I see. Onion hoops, Margaret. Onion loops, Mabel. Onion circles. Onion O's. Wait. These two know what roast chicken is, what mashed potato is, what Yorkshire puddings are, etc. But they don't know what onion rings are? Maybe you two should visit Burger King sometime. Oh, look, Mabel. Spotted dick. <laughs> oh, grow up. Oh, wait a minute. You're already high. You're in your 80s. Look! She's serving roast chicken with Yorkshire's! Yorkshire's? She's taken roast chicken to New Orleans! Don't mind us! Bon appetit! Upgrade your roast- One, call the police. Two, ask them what their problem is. Three, call the police. And four, call the police! She's serving roast chicken with Yorkshire's Margaret. I've never seen that before. Well... Whoa, 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 wait. What did you just say? She's serving roast chicken with Yorkshire's Margaret. I've never seen that before. Well... <sighs> so... You've been living on this planet for 70 or 80 years. You've known nearly every kind of meal during that time. Every kind. And in all those 80 years you've been living on this planet, 
you have never, ever seen roast chicken with Yorkshire puddings? Those two are aliens. I'm convinced. Those two are aliens. They came from another world. They were exiled to Earth. They wanted to know about human surroundings. They took two innocent women walking across the street. They took their bodies and scanned them to disguise themselves, to blend in with the human architecture. And they wanted to know all about human culture. So they decided to spy on an innocent family every single night when they're eating a roast dinner to know about roast chicken, Yorkshire puddings, and... Uh, <sighs> That's the only story I can come up with with these adverts, since they don't give us one themselves. Or at least they don't give us time to. I'm so excited about the next few weeks, Margaret. It's going to be very entertaining. Oh, great. Now what are they doing? Ooh, did you remember the camping stove? Check! Okay, another guess on what the story is. The family that they've been spying on had finally seen what they were doing. They realized that they've been spying on them every single night while eating their roast dinner. And then they finally call the police and then they get exiled to some jungle in Australia. Which just so happened to be the same jungle where they film I'm a celebrity, get me out of here. They've gone to bed with no dinner again, Margaret. And now they're spying on the celebrities. Poor thing. It looks like it could do with a chip. Ah, oh, they're homesick again, Mabel. Homesick? Would you look at him, taking a shower in the creek? Spotted dick, Margaret. I can't tell. When are you two going to stop spying on people? A family is worse enough, but when are you going to stop spying altogether? It's just... creepy! They've gone to bed with no dinner again, Margaret. Let's give them something sweet to dream about. Jam roly-poly. Oh, you're so considerate. Wait. You're in a jungle, and you happen to have all of the Aunt Bessie's food that you need, now that you're finally eating it, but you've got all that food with you, you somehow know how to work an oven to cook it all, and you're spying on the celebrities, which are about a few feet away from where they are. <laughs> How come the celebrities never saw you there? I want... I would have liked to have seen these adverts in canon to what's happening with the celebrities every day. I mean, wouldn't they have seen those binoculars anywhere? I mean, wouldn't they have gone curious and explore a little bit more of the jungle around them and they find a pair of binoculars sneaking from some leaves and they find you two with a home kitchen like setting in the middle of the jungle with all of these food all prepared for themselves we we seen them eating all of their food for themselves and not thinking once to give all that food to the celebrities that are obviously starving they could do with a homely meal margaret shall we send them some mash oh no mabel looks like they're enjoying their beans you two are pretty much their lifesavers right now they are living on beans and rice every day. And you're comforting them with Aunt Bessie's? And you do it off air when there's no cameras filming. Or at least they don't show you giving them the food on the I'm a Celebrity show. And... Just, just go to the next adverts. This is really... Oh, thank God. Something that will make the slightest bit more sense than those Aunt Bessie's adverts.
from Kellogg's. So, do you mean to say that Kellogg's Fruit Winders was really those corpses, those stretched corpses of innocent anthropomorphic fruit? We were eating fruit that have been stretched by these psychopaths. I... I... Uh. Also, what's with the narrator? He sounds even more of a psycho than those fruit mascots. It's the longest, stretchiest, fruity snack around, around, around! New Apple Fruit Winders from Kellogg's. Unwind the fruity fun forever! New screaming fruit squidges from Kellogg's! Squidgy fruity fun forever! I swear, every single time he goes into a high note, it sounds like he's about to murder a child. Along with those fruit. <laughs> it's fruit like you've never had it before. <laughs> a totally new snack! Squidge it, squelch it, squeeze it out! Oh god, you can see the souls of those black currants. They're screaming out for it to stop. Oh god. <coughs> Who's the next victim? Okay, this makes it even more creepy the second you say victim. Call free phone 00800909060 and you choose the next fruit to be stretched into a delicious juicy real fruit wonder! I'm sorry, a what? Real fruit wonder! Well, I don't know what a real fruit wonder is, but I'm sure it's delicious. I guess. Raspberry, tropical, or lemon? Their fate is in your hands. Call free phone 00800909060 and vote now for your favorite flavor! Oh, thank God that advert ended right there. Because that was full on murder mode with that voice. We asked you to vote. What should be the next juicy real fruit winder and what should stretch them? Hey, wait, you didn't say anything about what to stretch them with. All you asked us to do was to vote for the fruit, not about what to stretch them with. You chose... Tropical! You want it, you got it. Get your new Tropical! Real Fruit Winder, now. <laughs> oh, and they just so happen to have a design for a tropical killer mascot. Maybe they had one for raspberry and lemon as well, but... I don't know. Even though we loved eating fruit winders back in the day, you have to question these adverts. They're just so dark. I mean, they're expecting us to believe that we have been eating the corpses of some stretched fruit that have been stretched to death by these psychopaths. Oh god, I really need to take my mind off this crap. I mean, isn't there any other food advert that makes us believe that we're eating innocent people? What? What? Come on, Kevin, it did. Fruits, rip their heads off and suck their guts out. I. 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 That. <laughs> I need 
need to wrap this up before I go insane. I hope you enjoyed my first video on reviewing weird commercials. Sure, some of them are weird, but they all have a nostalgic feel to it. Like I said, it would remind you of a great thing that you used to love as a kid, like your favorite food or your favorite toy, and I really hope I can do more of these type of videos in the future. That is, if I can find enough commercials to review on or critique upon. Well, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Let's just hope that I don't get a mind grain of how much weird the next few commercials are. Bye. Rip their heads off! Suck their guts out! You use that for your slogan? What sort of cheese was that?